You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa, and I'm chatting to Mark Barnes, the CEO of the South African Post Office. You started on the 15th of January, 2016. Yeah, a lifetime ago. A lifetime ago. Yeah. So you are now five weeks into the job. Yeah. And how's it going? Well, it's, as, it's more exciting than I'd, I hoped it would be, actually. <laughs> no, it's, a very, it's an extraordinary uh, collection of, uh, you know, of past mistakes and future opportunities. You know? And it's, it's whether we can you know, deal with those in the right proportions and settle the past and build a future. Uh, so uh, the numbers are all bigger than I thought they would be. The problems are all bigger, but they're behind us. And frankly, uh, they're all out in the open now. So we've sort of got a clean slate on the numbers. Talk me through your day before we get into the detail. Yeah. I want to understand what your yeah, day I, consists of. Well, I think for the first month, a lot of my day was, 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 was trying to gather the executive around to build our own view of the future. There have been so many views of the future about the post office and these numbers, and the numbers are all big, and so the propensity for error is quite high. And I spent quite a lot of time, uh, you know, sort of in a boardroom with people with a cokey pen and a, uh, you know, flip chart, trying to build up the income statement and balance sheet of the company for the next three years from the people who are going to be given the task to go and make that happen. So I spent a lot of time with that. But at typical days, I, I get into my office, and first of all, I see what I have to do for all of my stakeholders, because there's always a list, you know, the regulator, the oversight and the parliamentary obligations that we have and the compliance uh, obligations that we have are not trivial, to be kind. How many meetings do you attend on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, I've tried to cut that back because when I arrived there, the place was a plethora of meetings, actually, and I come from the school where meetings aren't work. Meetings don't equal work, and I try not to tolerate a meeting longer than an hour and a half. And when I arrived there, my diary filled up almost instantly with this committee and that committee and every other committee. And um, I cut them all uh, and I started a delegation process because when I got there, I discovered everything was de delegated to the top. Now, there's, you know, that's often the case in an organization where uh, no one's really certain about what they've got to do. So they send it upwards so that they can't be blamed for it. Um, and uh, so I had to start off by saying, okay, well, let's just delegate this all back down again we'll, with some respect and accountability. And let's start a thought process which says you, you, you'll be judged more harshly for not take, taking a decision than perhaps for making a mistake. Do you believe that the criticisms that are thrown around where the South African Post Office is concerned yeah. are valid? Yeah. I mean, they are. I mean... Uh, what's more interesting than uh, the accusations, and I've got two cell phones now because the accusations come at me directly. You know, I posted these biscuits on this date and they should be stale by now and my aunt down in Port Hood and so on. Um, yeah, they are valid. You know, the, uh, the post office uh, over the last decade has wasted an extraordinary amount of money, which is the subject of the Public Protectors Report and the you know, SIU investigations, and that's all out and we're backing them 100% to go and find the baddies and lock them up if that's what we need to do. Uh, but what's really happened is that we've run out of money some time ago and we're losing money. Not unlike other state-owned enterprises. Yeah, yeah but I, I think it, it, it's quite extraordinary because the, the, the post office is not dysfunctional. But when you stop paying your creditors, they stop delivering stuff to you. So, you know, a parcel will arrive at our tambo and we wouldn't have paid the warehouse, so it'll stay there until we pay the Many would say that is dysfunctional. Well, it is dysfunctional, except it can be remedied with cash. Okay, so a parcel does move around in the post office. You go and walk into a post office now. In fact, almost, even now compared to November when I started walking into post offices, there's a change of mood about the place. There's some kind of hope that this might come together. And if we settle all of our credits, it's an extraordinarily big sum of money. What are we talking we, about? We, well, I, you know, I'm not a deputy disclosure, but it's, it's, it's much more than all of our credit cards to get, could put together. It's a Is big sum of money. Is it more than you anticipated? Oh, yeah, yeah, much more. And one of our big creditors is Labour, actually, you know, who had you know, four years of promised deals and increases and things which didn't manifest and so on. And so a lot of people have had patience with the, with the post office, but that has dried up. And so people are going, you know, your stuff's on my truck, but I'm not moving it anywhere until you pay last month or the last year's account, or whatever the case might be. I'm probably the first CEO, and there have been many, that have actually walked around in the mail centers. And they've told me that, that that's, I'm the first guy they've seen. Okay. And I sit down so and I talk So how quickly can you remedy the mistakes of the past? 
Because you're going to have to put those to bed, as you've rightly pointed yeah, out, I, before I you can move forward. Yeah, I see us starting to turn profitable in about six to eight months' time if we get all the capital we've asked for. Okay, and, and the capital is almost all of it to settle obligations of the past. Okay, and some of those obligations of the past, a small percentage of them, are things like we've got you know computer systems that need to be a little bit more today, you know, than they are, uh, and we've got. But but we're a basically functional unit. And there's basically an overwhelming desire for, for the pub, from the public to use us. And the strange thing is where we've let it go, like in the courier business, where everyone's stolen our lunch. You know, we, I mean, there's no, we, can't, we don't compete anymore in that business, but we've got the capacity. Now they, what they've done is they've created extraordinary margin gaps for us to fill again. Okay, so at some point you get so frustrated at the post office that you'll pay almost anything to have your whatever it is delivered on time and intact. Okay. That has created a pricing structure, which is two, three, four, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 times what our margins need to be for us to make a living in some of those businesses. And so, you know, if we arrive back and if people are convinced by our actions that we are going to deliver things on time, it's not like we've never done it before, you know. So you see opportunity in the career business? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, huge growth. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the, the growth in the career, if you look at the relationship between e-commerce and the courier business and if you look at the relationship between um, you know logistics and the courier business and all these kind I mean we are all living in a get it to me today society in the old days you put something in the mail it's in the mail you know the check is in the mail in all the interviews yeah. that you've participated in yeah. to this point yeah talking about the opportunity e-commerce features very very highly it is because you can order a bicycle in the ether, but someone's got to get it to your house, okay? And if you look what Amazon's doing worldwide, they bought a 30% stake in United Parcel Service. They started, they invested in petrol stations. They started building their own physical, you know, brick and mortar infrastructure because you've got to, the, the unit cost of outsourcing delivery is just too high for, you know, and, and that's why they've got into the business and we'd partner with them. And the, the other remarkable thing is how many people I get, you know, I don't know, a proposal a day. And I'm not exaggerating. For people who want to be our partner, if we get if we get back on our if we get back on our if feet. you get back on your feet, yeah, so who's going to back feet. you while you're getting back on well, your feet? Well, you know, I think we've uh, we've got the support. I put together a, a financial case to Treasury. I took it to Treasury. The first day I went to Treasury, they said, "Mark, we, we don't believe any numbers that come out of the post office, and we've got no money." So I was like, "Okay." No, <laughs> you, you're again. stuck between a rock and a hard yeah, place. Yeah. So we talked, and we I think we you know we we first of all we explained how we got to the numbers that we believe in and how realistic they are compared to other numbers they might have seen or not believed and so on. And so we have got, uh, you know, we were the only SOE that got a capital injection in the budget, by the way. And we've got, you know, Treasury uh, providing us with guarantees to go and raise the balance of the funding until such time. I mean, our timing was bad. The budget is cast in concrete a long time before February. Okay. So for us to go and open that box without some, you know, emergency was, wasn't possible. But I think we've got the support. What support? Know. Now, let, let's put the, the capital aside yeah, because yeah. Treasury said they're going to give you the money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you now obviously are going to have to turn that money into yeah. tangible results. Yeah, yeah. But you are one man. So what are you doing? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because you are going to have to have some like-minded yeah, individuals yeah. around you to make this happen. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I, I sort of did a deal with myself that for the first three months, I'd only look inside the organization. Because, you know, I found in, in, in my experience in business that, uh, you know, a lot of people just uh, need to be encouraged to grow rather than stamped on because you think they don't know. Okay. And so... Have you found some bright yeah, stars? I, yeah, I have. I mean, there's always a mixture. Um, and uh, we, we, we've sat intensely with one another. And, we, we, you know, I don't want to get too romantic about this, but we're kind of holding hands about this because there's only one shot. Okay. And so uh, I don't know the answer yet to the people. There's no doubt that we've got too many people for the revenue base that we've got, okay? Uh, my hope is that we can grow the revenue base and not necessarily have to cut the people base, but we'll see where that finally ends up. But the How much time are you giving yourself on, um, on that side The sort of, of deal I talked to government about was, um, I'll give you uh, financial independent post office in three years, I'll give you a valuable asset in five. Okay, now what that really means is you're gonna change what the post office is. And if you look at post offices around the world, those that have morphed into the modern society are seventy percent financial services and insurance and uh, you know and logistics and all of these kinds of things. We seventy percent post, 
Okay, so get with the program. Okay, and and you know, and we, you know, that's the situation. The biggest listing last year in Japan was the post office, the Italian post. These P, these post offices are trading on seven, eight, twelve PE multiples. Okay, I'm not suggesting we're going to list, but I can see a world in three years' time from now where we issue South African post office bonds again, where we become completely self-funding and independent of the state by virtue of that change in, in, in revenue mix. And I think a lot of that's going to have to do with partnerships. In fact, this whole deal is about partnership, actually. We, are we talking here about private-public private partnerships? Yeah, private-public partnerships. partnerships. I mean, I, I've already been approached by competitors, and I've only been there five weeks. So. Competitors come and say, Mark, listen, you know, we're out there, we've created the space, you know, in, the, in this particular parcel niche. Uh, we would work better with you because it's costing us a lot of money and, you know, we could maybe cut a deal and so on. And I've put those all in a, in a tray and I haven't started that discussion. But there are a lot of people that want to deal with, deal with us in that way. And so I think this is, a, it is about partnership. This whole deal for me is about whether the government, business and labor can cut a deal. Whether that triangle can become functional. But you do need to yeah, but it's upgrade not a the, the electronic side of the business. Yeah, yeah but that goes, that, that's an investment, not a cost. That's not a redundancy cost. Okay, so we'd have to you know, expand our bandwidth. Yeah, why? Because there's a massive inflow of business that needs it okay, and supports it. The post office can, can, can be a place where you go, I mean, we don't do any government business of note. Okay, so, you know, why shouldn't you collect your pension from the post office? Why shouldn't you get your social grant paid out of the post so this office? This is the right? post bank the post that bank, yeah. could so post really bank become middle, a strong entity. Yeah, post bank sits in the middle of the post office untouched. Okay, so it's completely insulated. It takes deposits, puts the money on the, in treasury bills. Okay, and that's how it should be until we've got appropriate transactional, uh, you know, capacity. Is your vision that the post bank could become a fully operational yeah, retail absolutely. bank in no, South absolutely, Africa? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it could, play, it could play a massive role to, I mean, even, you know, you start thinking about, well, why should African Bank be sitting inside? The reserve? Why, shouldn't it be managed within a branch network that's already established, that's owned by the state, if that's where the risk is already lying? And, you know, so there are, but we've got, you, you know, Ronan, I'm not going, going to go and ask for any favors. Well, some, but, you know, not too many favors. I'm going to go and demonstrate, I mean, the whole, demonstrate the investment case. So, I mean, a lot of people in my position previously at the post office said, well, can you help us out? You know, and I go, well, uh, think of us as an investment. If you give us this money and we capture this percentage of e-commerce or that percentage of funeral policies in South Africa, okay, then, you know what, this is the kind of return. Of all the, the challenges that yeah. you've embarked on in your career, mm. and there have been many, yeah. is this by far the biggest? Way, way by far the biggest, yeah. And the most public? Yeah, it is very public and, uh, you know, I've got to be cautious about using that to build uh, and not to create, you know, over expectation and to deliver into that. But I do want the public to be with us on this. because. And do you feel that momentum? Do, do you feel, you feel, feel do positivity? Feel, I, do, yeah, I do, because, I mean, everyone uses the post office. This is not like, you know, SAA, I don't know how many people fly, 3 million, maybe? I don't know. 50 million people. We've got 50 million clients at the post office. I want them to be part of this. And if they all just do a little bit more than they were doing last year, we have a business. When you attend dinner parties, yeah. are you the topic of conversation? Are people in yeah. awe of you yeah. that you've now people, yeah. taken on the position as the CEO yeah, of people the post walk office? Up to me that I've never met in, you know, in the shopping centres and they go, Mark, we, we, we're with you. Hey? We're inspired by what you're doing. We hope it works out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get a lot of criticisms on my cell phone from people who haven't had things delivered on time or waiting for a pass or something. But when I walk around South Africans, they always go, this is an amazing thing. You know, people must stop sitting and whinging and start getting involved. I get huge support, uh, you know, without exception, so far. Do you sleep well? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah no, not always. Um, I, think of, I think a lot and I anticipate and I can exaggerate the downsides in my mind quite fast. And so I can get on this roller coaster, which is, oh, I wouldn't get the money in time and we'll have, you know. Um, so I, you know, it, it does, it, it gets inside me, this stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, and I do, I do have an issue about not wanting to fail, you know, so, uh, yeah, so sometimes I don't sleep, but I can tell you whenever I, I drive up to that horrible, you know, building, which is the post office in Centurion, it's not the most, uh, I go, yeah, I, I, I want this, I want, I want to be part of it, I, want, I, I, f I feel a pride in it, and I've only been there five weeks. Are you going to have to go to market with a huge publicity campaign to change the face of the post office as we know it? Yeah, I think of it. You know, I, you know for example, the guys that I was talking about, you know, how are we going to get persuade people to pay for their, to renew their post box rentals? Okay. 
well, we can lock the box and, and then they can not come and, and we can find them. Well, I said, well, we could get like a bunch of balloons and go like, we're back, you know, come on. You know, do the, you know, come and pay and we'll, and we'll, we'll try and keep the fines away for a week. I don't know, we could, we definitely got to change the perceptions um, of what the post office is. But, but perceptions are one thing. We've got to change the realities. We've got to demonstrate that you can post a cell phone here in Santon and get it delivered in Centurion on time and intact. When we've demonstrated that once and twice and however many times, by whatever systems oversight and by whatever moral fiber we can reignite, okay, people will come back. They would much rather post their granny a watch in Folks than do it through DHL. I know that, you know, and so there's a good there's an extraordinary goodwill, swelling goodwill, you know. What attracted you to this challenge? You know, I've been writing a bit about things and I got exposed to state-owned enterprises as a subject, state capitalism as a subject and so on. And then at some point in time, they were talking about effectively shutting the post office down. They were going to cut 5,000 jobs and close 650 branches and so on. And I wrote to the government, I said, you know, if you do that, you're going to just take a outdated, rotten organization and make it a smaller, outdated, rotten organization. What about growing it? You know, what and your, your letter was answered? Yeah, I, I took a presentation to them and they eventually sat down and listened to me. And uh, I think they were like, yeah, maybe, hey, maybe this thing, you know, maybe there's a growth. In fact, for me, the whole country story is not about austerity, it's about growth. It's about are we prepared to risk, are we prepared to think about things as investment rather than consumption expenditure? Okay, so I took this growth strategy, which went from, you know, it, it included things like, well, should we deliver chronic medicines? You know, I mean, to go and get your antiretrovirals in Johannesburg if you live somewhere in the free state, okay? It takes two economic days there and back, okay? And you've got to buy yourself food. Well, what happened? Why couldn't we deliver those? Why couldn't we download education at the post offices? Why can't the post office be the place that you go on a Saturday A great to vision. Do stuff? You've got a great vision. Yeah. Now but it's, it's not the just a vision that's happened. So what are the easy wins for you? Um, You're five weeks in. You've done okay, the, the easy, assessment. The easy wins are just to take basic money and have more and more and there are some already stories about how I got my mail on time okay and people it's people can't wait to say that because I get I also get emails and SMSs from people say you know what I actually got a letter that someone posted to me the other day hurrah you know like as if it was a special thing so we've got to deliver letters on time for starters and parcels I mean letters is a small business actually and retail is a small business financially our biggest business is corporates but then you can understand why I get, I get really annoyed when a guy is posted out a you know, magazine with a special feature that is f for June and they get the magazine in July. You know? So you can understand why they get a bit unhappy about that. So it's, it's, I, we, need some, we need to go and open the Bryanston Post Office, for goodness sake. You know, go there and I'll go there and I'll help sort the mail. The broader political environment can't be helping your case right now. You must be no. despairing you know, when you read the news in the newspaper reports, uh, Treasury versus Presidency, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. and, and now apparently everyone's backing one another again. But I mean, what you're trying to achieve is this partnership between government, labor, and business. Yeah. We don't seem to be any closer to achieving yeah. harmony in yeah. that triangle, in that equation, yeah. in the current environment. No, we don't. I mean, I, you know, I've been, I've been upset by some of the spats and the discords that are happening and you know they they you know as much as the numbers they reflect on whether you should invest in south africa or not you know and so that's a worrying feature you know that political kind of stuff the the broader political mood in the country must be impacting well you know I, let me get, take the unions as, let me take the, let me take the soon. unions as an example so i engaged with three uh, three of our four unions so far and and you know i was expecting a lot worse okay because i you know i'm not practiced in this union debate but I went to them with the truth and I told them this is where we are, this is what's likely to happen, these are the time frames. And they, you know, without exception, they just said, listen, we, we, we've been missing the truth. You know, we, we, we found ourselves between promises that weren't fulfilled and constituencies were looking, that were looking for leadership. Okay. And just, and I, you know, I've gone there and I've said, I've, I've come here to help. I mean, I've come here on purpose. Okay. And, and they've said, come and help us. And let's but it will be a different equation, Mark, if you've got to go in there and say that you are laying off 5,000 people. Oh, yeah, yeah, it will be a completely You're not going to be met with open arms. No, I'm not going to be met with open arms, but, I, but, but I, there won't be surprises. You know, I mean, I, 
I don't have those layoff plans in my immediate plans, but I mean, if we, if we don't do all these fabulous things that I'm hoping we will do, then of course that'll happen. Um, but, uh, but I walked around, Bronwyn and I walked around there, I walked around in, you know, in, uh, in Witzpors, you know, in Normand, okay. Um, I, I went and got a, you know, a, a sorter's uniform and I walked around with the people and I sat down and they just said to me, come and help us, man, come on. Come and show us where we're going, come and help us. And I said, that's what I'm here to do. So it's, it's slightly, and, and there's no, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't do hierarchy. I don't do, you know, Mr. and all that sort of stuff. I'm a pretty Gewone Oak that, you know, went to a government school in Belfast. And, and uh, that engagement with the people has already been different to what they've been used to uh, and, and, and surprised them a little bit. And empowering people, you know, I mean, I've sat down, you go in there and all the meeting rooms are big and there are lots of people and they all come. And, you know, you start off by putting someone on the spot and then you start encouraging them to say something. And some of them are saying something for the first time in three years. You mentioned the public protector and the yeah, investigation yeah. into the maladministration. You've also got the magazine industry up in arms, mm. lost well, revenues. Well, up in arms, I'm about to phone the guy. Okay, I'm going to have a meeting with him. Yeah. But uh, yes, I have got them. And so I you've inherited a number of issues that are going to land further yeah, on your Well, desk. I have. And, you know, two things about that. First of all, uh, I met with the public protector. And she said to me, you know, attitudinally, Mark, where are you on this? I mean, you know, how do you feel about the post office? I said, well, you know, listen, as far as I'm concerned, tell the truth, tell it quickly, and tell it transparently, and we will join you in finding what went wrong. And then I went to sort of the, 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 you know, the Special Investigations Unit, and I said the same thing to them. In fact, we've become a co-applicant with them in the pursuit of the people that did wrong. And there were big, big numbers that went wrong. Okay, in fact, it's one of the curious things about the post office that, in a funny way, it makes it positive. We have we've made a hell of a lot of money that we've wasted. Okay, I mean we've when when you can blow billions, you had to make them in the in the first instance. Going back a few, we are not even as ambitious as getting back to our turnover of two years ago in order to become profitable. I mean that's. Let's difference. go back to your target. Three years, you want a profitable business. Three no, two years profitable. Two years profitable. 2018, we turn a profit in, in my books. So three that starts trading. Three years, we're financially independent. So five years, valuable asset. Five years, valuable asset. What could you do with it? Then that's the government's call. You know, could you want to sell 25% uh, of it, get all your capital back? Do you want to list Is it? Is this something of a broader uh, formula that could be applied to state-owned enterprises across the board? Could you move, once you, you've executed your five-year vision for the post office, could no. you go to South African Airways? No, I'm going to Komiki Beach after I've done that. But yes, I, you know, I absolutely believe that public-private partnerships are where we need to go. I mean, this whole country is about us wanting to be partnerships and finding common cause. That's the only missing link as far as I'm concerned right now. So absolutely. In fact, I'd go this far. I would say that if you're a a uh, 65 year old successful business person, you should voluntarily or compulsorily go and sit on the board of an SOE for one year. That's four or five board meetings worth of hell. Do it for free and infuse some of that knowledge for nothing. You know, make it compulsory, make it, you know, compulsory service. Uh, and, you know, I think that we find more intersection than we think we will when we sit down and talk. Because We've got a common threat. Now, what I'd like to move to is a world where we've got a common cause. Right now, we've got a common threat, uh, the, the economic survival, and we cannot fund transformation in South Africa without a foundation of economic prosperity. Can't be done. Okay. You and want to move, from, in a broader sense, I've seen the quotes, you want to move from a rainbow nation to one nation. Yeah, just to one nation, to, you know, com to common purpose. I mean, you know, we, 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 when we built soccer stadiums, we had common purpose. We, uh, we hosted a top world-class event because we all had one, one. And then when that was over, we started fighting about who should have built the stadiums and who should have won. Then we went back to our normal old ways, divisory ways. We've got a massive challenge of inequality. We're like the world champions at inequality economically. You know, and there are different contributing factors. You know, I look out of this window and I see a massive building going up and I see fabulous, you know, high-tech cranes standing right next to people with, you know, hard hats on. It's a, it's a partnership, man. And Africa uh, is a growth story as far as I'm concerned. Well, you very visibly have thrown your hat into the ring. Are you scared of failure? Yeah. What if you don't succeed? I'll be very disappointed, but yeah, I am scared of failure. Um, 
is it it's an one option? One of my drivers. Hey? Is it an option? Is failure an well, option? Well, you know, I mean, because uh, that will be your legacy. Disconnecting is a uh, is 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 the the biggest threat. Is if I get to a point where I go like, I can't do. I, I can't with these ingredients and this trouble and this challenge and this that. And I've, I've already confronted that one or two times. I go like, no, I, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I, no. If this is what you guys, no. And Are you, you leaping like, out of bed in the morning to get to the post office? Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you, I arrive at the Centurion and I see the logo in the distance, and I do. I feel, yeah, man, you know, I love it, you know, in a way. And then there's some nights, you know, three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I, I have these images of how the cash flows don't meet the, you know, I do. I worry about it. It's the most exciting business thing I've ever done in my life, uh, you know, and it's, you know, somewhere between a, a historic catastrophe and a, an amazing, you know, growth story. And so, I mean, what more would I want to do uh, with what business acumen I have and what South Africanness is in me, which is, there's a lot. And, you know, and if we come out of this holding hands and winning in some way, the post office, and we go, I get gooseys, man, when I say that, you know. Well, it's very difficult not to get caught up in your passion. You know that as the media, we'll yeah. be here to document your progress. No, win or lose. Step, <laughs> win or lose yeah. every yeah. step of the way. And Thanks, uh, wishing you the best of luck. Thanks. I've been chatting to Mark Barnes, CEO of the South African Post Office. You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa.